Hey guys, and welcome back to Mike and his whiteboard. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're going to be talking about a strategy, which is the straddle. So yesterday we talked about standard deviation and how we can use that with our option strategies. Today we're going to go back into strategies and discuss the straddle, which is essentially the sale of a put and a call on the same strike and same expiration. So it's one of the best undefined risk strategies that we like to use. So when we look at the first slide here, we're gonna break down how a straddle is profitable. So when we look at this graph, we've got a 120 strike, and you can see below the strike bar, we have a put and a call in the November expiration. Now, when you look at the dollar value above that, you can see that we actually have a range of profitability. So this is defined as a neutral strategy. So you can see that the, uh, above the dollar sign we have the dotted line, and the dotted line is highest when we're at the money. And that's because the at the money strike and the at the money options have the most extrinsic value, and that's where we're getting this large sale from. So at expiration, if we actually pin that strike and the stock price is at 120, we're going to make max profit because if the stock is literally at 120.00, both of those options will be considered out of the money because they're not one penny in the money either way. So this is how a straddle is going to look when we're looking at a traditional risk graph and where the profitability is going to lie. But if we look at the next slide here, we can see what sort of example we can look at when we're looking at how we can be profitable and what sort of ranges we can be profitable in. So when we have a look at the next slide here, we've got a credit of 850 in the upper right corner. And we have the same sort of risk graph that we were using before. We are looking at the same put and call on the 120 strike. But now we've broken it out to give you a sense of what sort of credit we might be getting for each of these options. So we're essentially assuming that there is a normal volatility skew here, which is why we're receiving more for the put than we are for the call. So if we're looking at the put, we've got 455 in credit. And when we look at the call, we've got $3.95 in credit, which is giving us that total of $8.50 credit that we're taking in. So when we're looking at different examples here, we're basically looking at the stock at expiration. So if the stock is at 116 at expiration, we would be profitable to the tune of $450. Now, how am I getting that number? Well, essentially what I'm knowing is that either the put or the call is going to be in the money at a certain point in time. So if the stock is at 116, that means that the put is in the money. Now remember, when we sell a put, we have the right to essentially buy the shares at a certain strike. So when I sell a put, I'm basically selling the other person the right to sell me their shares. It's a little confusing, but once you get that down, it makes a lot more sense. So when we're selling the put, if the stock price is below our strike, that means that they can now sell the shares at 120, even though the stock is trading at 116. So that gives the put intrinsic value, and that's why that put is in the money. So at expiration, we would have to buy back that put for $4. So the strike is at 120, the stock price is at 116, so that's $4 difference, so we're gonna have to buy that back for $4. Now, if we took in $8.50 originally, if we only have to buy back the put for $4 because the call is out of the money and worthless, essentially what we do is take that $8.50, subtract the $4 we have to buy back the put for, and that gives us our profit of $4.50. Now, if we're looking at a different example, let's say the stock is at $1.25 at expiration. Now, the call is going to be in the money. So the stock price is going to be above our strike, which is 120, and we're gonna to have to buy back that call for $5. So doing the same example as before, we're basically taking the $8.50 credit, subtracting, subtracting the $5 in the money value for the call that we're gonna to have to buy back, which gives us that profit of 350 there. Now, two things to note about straddles is that one of the things is that one option will always be in the money. So unless the stock price is at exactly 120.00, it's going to be in the money either way. So if it's below the stock price, then the put's gonna be in the money, and if it's above the strike price, then the call's gonna be in the money. So it's important to keep note of that as the trade goes along. The next thing to keep note of is that we like to manage these around 25%. So again, since this is a neutral strategy and it's undefined risk, and we're trying to pin a strike essentially, even though we have a, a wide range to be profitable, essentially to get max profit, we need to pin that strike. 
So if we can capture 25 or 30% of this uh, credit that we've received pretty quickly, then we're gonna be happy to close the trade. So let's look at the next, the next slide here and we'll see what we're looking at in terms of when we use this strategy. So the very first thing is we're gonna be looking for high IV rank. So we talked about IV before and essentially when we sell IV, that's gonna basically mean that the prices are inflated. And if we're selling this option or these options at a high IV, we hope for implied volatility to deflate or decrease, which is going to allow us to buy back the spread at a lower price. So again, if I can sell this spread for 850, let's say the stock price is at 120 and I sold this for 850. Now, if implied volatility contracts, maybe I can buy back the same spread for $6, which is gonna give me a profit of $2.50. So this can be considered an implied volatility play as well. Uh, so this is one thing that we're gonna look at when we're using this strategy. Now, the next thing is, again, it's a neutral assumption. So if I'm looking to add occurrences to my portfolio in a neutral manner, I might look at something like a straddle or a strangle or an iron condor. As long as we have these pretty much centered, and especially in this scenario, we would want to be selling it right on the, the stock price with the same strike price. So we're gonna look at the at the money options. It's going to give me a pretty neutral profit range. So these two things are pretty much things that we look for when we use this strategy. Two things I'm going to be aware of when I'm placing this strategy is that there's constantly going to be in the money options. So again, unless the stock price is at exactly 120.00 in the examples before, one of these options is going to be in the money. And the reason why this is important to be aware of is simply because of assignment risk. Now, assignment risk is essentially when we're selling something, we're giving the other person the right to exercise that contract. So although assignment's pretty rare, it's definitely something to keep in mind because we have a certain buying power reduction, which we actually talked about in a previous whiteboard, which you can actually look for if you click on find shows and then scroll down to Mike and his whiteboard, it'll definitely be there. Um, but when we're looking at buying power reduction, if I have a straddle on, it's gonna give me one buying power reduction. But now if one of the options or both of the options are exercised, I'm either going to be long shares or short shares at the certain strike price. So if I now become long shares or short shares, that buying power reduction is going to change. So the risk profile of this trade is gonna be the same, but the buying power reduction can change. So it's always important to note that when we're dealing with naked options like this, buying power reduction and just being aware of assignment is crucial. Now let's go to the next slide and we'll wrap up the takeaways for the straddle. So the very first takeaway is that a straddle is similar to a strangle, but options share the same strike price. So again, when we were talking about strangles, it's essentially the same thing. We're selling an out of the money put and an out of the money call, but they're on different strike prices. So we have an out of the money put and out of the money call, same expiration, but different strike prices. So it's also going to be an undefined risk neutral strategy with a pretty wide break even point on either side, but it's going to have a higher probability of touch um, in terms of the options not being touched by the stock price because we're not sharing that, that strike at the, at the money options. We have out of the money options, so we're giving ourselves a little more leeway in terms of either option going in the money. The next takeaway here is that max profit is realized that the stock pins the short strike at expiration. So again, Unlike the strangle, which is where we've got two out of the money options and we have a wide range where the stock price can move, we're collecting a much larger credit because we're selling two at the money options. So we still have a profit range in that same sense, but our max profit is only gonna be realized if the stock price pins our short strike at expiration. And last but not least, we like to manage these early if we can. So if we find an opportunity to sell a straddle at a very high IV rank, and then maybe a couple days later or a week later, the implied volatility comes down, or just the juice and the options comes out and we can buy that back for a lower price, we like to usually manage these a little sooner just because we're gonna have one option that's pretty much gonna be in the money at a certain time during this trade. So just to mitigate our risk and manage our winner, we're gonna look for that opportunity whenever we can get it. So this has been The Straddle. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you've got any questions at all, shoot me an email at support at doe.com or support at or you can tweet us at doe trading, at doe trader Mike, or at 
Thanks so much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Hey everyone, I hope you liked this video. Click below to watch more videos, subscribe to our channel, or go to our website.